Hi, my name is Dr. Katie Johnson, OBGYN at Grand Itasca. In my practice, I see women of all ages from teenage years all the way through menopause. I see them for gynecologic care and I also see them for their pregnancies, prenatal care and aftercare. So once you've finished your childhood vaccination series, there's a few vaccines that are recommended for all adults. I'm including an annual flu vaccine for uh, women of childbearing age, we recommend a Tdap or tetanus booster during pregnancies. And then the shingles vaccine is recommended for everyone over the age of 50. A Tdap vaccine is recommended during every pregnancy. And the reason being not for the T, but more importantly, the P at the end or pertussis, which is whooping cough. Whooping cough for an adult is like a really long cold, but for babies can be fatal because their airways are so small. Unfortunately, immunity to pertussis is not very good. And so by getting vaccinated with every pregnancy, you boost that immunity both for mom to prevent her from spreading it to her baby, but also it boosts that immunity that crosses the placenta to help protect her little one. The HPV vaccine is ideally done for adolescent girls, preferably under the age of 15 to complete their series because then it only needs to be two shots, but it can be done as a three shot series for older girls and young women. It is approved for up to age 49, but ideally it's done when you're younger um, before potential exposure to HPV. So screenings that we start with can be divided into cancer and non-cancer screenings. So for all adults, when you come for your annual wellness checkup, you'll get your blood pressure checked, which is a blood pressure screening. Um, depending on your age and your risk factors, they'll start doing diabetes screening, cholesterol screening. And then for cancer screenings, um, we start pap smears at age 21. And then after that, the frequency is usually every three years until you hit the age of 30. And then if they're still normal at that point, then the screenings can be spaced out if we combine it with an HPV test to every five years. And that continues until a woman is age 65, but sometimes we need to go longer if there's ever been a history of an abnormal pap smear or any treatments of the cervix. Other cancer screenings that are recommended for women, including breast cancer screening, that usually starts with a discussion with your doctor around the age of 40. Other screening that we recommend is colon cancer screening. Some start at age 45, some start at age 50, and that all depends partly on your family history and other risk factors as well. Bone density screening is recommended to start usually at age 65, but it may be recommended for a woman earlier depending on her risk factors um, or family history. Screenings and vaccinations are important to help prevent disease or to find disease early before it becomes a bigger problem. An example is cervical cancer. Cervical cancer in and of itself is actually usually slow growing. And if you get your pap smears regularly on your schedule that you're supposed to, the chances of actually getting cervical cancer are very rare. If you start having abnormal pap smears, it's even more important to follow up with your doctor because intervention can be done early to prevent that from progressing onto cervical cancer. The same thing with colonoscopies starting at 45 or 50, depending on your risk factors. Um, the idea is to prevent not just colon cancer, but if you do develop it, to detect it at an early stage where intervention can make a difference. A good time to talk to your doctor about when vaccinations and screening is right for you is at your annual wellness checkups. I usually recommend starting them before you think you need them so that you can make a plan and discuss both your personal preferences and beliefs and also what the guidelines suggest that you can make a plan that works for you and is still recommended by your doctor. Grand Itasca Clinic and Hospital, your partner in health.